Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to our webinar today. Uh, my name is Carl. I am the Product Marketing Manager for Falstack. Uh, we are diving into a super fantastic and fascinating topic today, which is how AI is changing the way we work with images. So uh, get ready to discover how AI can not only fix common image problems, but also understands the emotions your pictures convey. So today, we will be exploring Filesack's super cool AI enhancement features, things like making your pictures sharper, brighter, and even analyzing the sentiment behind them. But the biggest twist is we're throwing Copilot into the mix, so Microsoft's Copilot. So if you're not familiar with Copilot, uh, you can picture it as your AI coding assistant. So it's going to be a wild ride seeing how it can improve the whole process of using FastAct's AI features along with your uh, existing code base. So our guest speaker, Patty O'Callaghan, who will introduce herself, will be the one presenting today. Hello, everyone, and, and welcome to this webinar. I'm, I'm very happy to be here today to uh, talk about AI technologies with all of you, which is one of my favorite topics. And yeah, just uh, get, getting ready to explore the exciting intersection of AI and image technology, uh, APIs, and of course, Copilot, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you everyone for, for joining today. And I would like to also thank Filestack for having me and giving me this platform an opportunity to, um, you know, run this webinar for all of you. So first I want to tell, to talk a little bit about myself and to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Patio Callahan. I'm originally from Venezuela, uh, but I live in the very, very beautiful Scotland. Uh, my background education is computer science in the field of artificial intelligence. I'm a tech lead at Charles River Laboratories, where I lead uh, the team that is in charge of um, the web projects. Um, I'm also a Google developer expert in AI and machine learning. And I'm very, very proud of being part of the amazing program from Google called Women Tech Makers. And I'm part of the program as an ambassador. And if you want to get in touch with me, if you have any comments or any question after this webinar, you can scan the QR code that is on the screen and you will be able to find all of my social media, my email and so on. And I will be super happy to connect with you uh, and to help out if needed. All right, so let's begin. So this is the agenda for the webinar. First of all, we're going to go through an introduction. Uh, then we are going to um, see how AI is being used for image processing and what, what are the different capabilities and areas where AI can be really, really useful in terms of, of images. Then we're going to talk about Copilot. What are, what are the, all of the very interesting features that are available uh, and that we can use in so many different applications and use cases. Then we're going to deep dive into file stacks, AI capabilities and features and I'm going to show you all of the really fun and useful stuff that we can do. And then we are going to go to the fun part, which is the demo time. We are going to have a look at the code, a very, very basic and simple application, very basic, uh, but that will help us to um, pick an image from our local machine and send it over to Filestack to be analyzed by these AI features and get some information back. And then by the end of the webinar, 
We are going to do a, a Q&A where you are going to be able to ask your questions, give your feedback, and I will be more than happy to answer and to help out. All right, so um, let's start. So let's talk about how AI can help us out in image processing. Uh, so I'm going to cover some of the use cases, but obviously not all of them. But for example, one very useful application of AI is the enhancement of images. So for example, we want we could be improving the resolution of an image. Maybe we want to do some color correction. Um, maybe we want to do some noise reduction and, and so on. So um, I'm pretty sure you have seen applications where, for example, you have a very, very old picture and you can uh, run these AI tools over them and you can get, you know, uh, uh, the resolution of the picture is, is way better. Maybe that picture was in black and white and now it can have, you know, colors in it or maybe it's a very, very pixelated picture and or, or image and you really want to improve the resolution of it or maybe reduce the noise. So this is an application of AI that is very, very useful and very much used um, over uh, in image processing. Another very interesting use case is sentiment analysis. So for example, we might need to, or we might want to detect emotions and moods that are present uh, in a picture or in an image. And that can be useful for many different kind of uh, applications. Another very interesting one is safe for work check-in. And basically what it does is that it helps us analyze the image and flag potentially inappropriate content or not. And we will see in the next slide some real life use cases for all of these um, methods to analyze and, and work with images. Okay, so let's see where the AI image technology really shines. So for example, let, let's think about e-commerce. So with e-commerce, we might want, maybe we have an e-commerce that has thousands of uh, or hundreds of products and we have a bunch of images and maybe uh, we really want those images to have uh, a very superior quality uh, because that will improve, you know, bring more attention into the products and then we can improve the sales. Or, and then we can also, we might want to do image enhancements, maybe, you know, do some color correction. Maybe we want to even tag what is inside uh, those images. So um, it's, a, it's a very useful um, technology for e-commerce uh, sites with lots of lots of products and, and images related to the products. Another useful um, area, another area where AI technology uh, can be very useful in terms of images is social media. So for example, uh, we would like to moderate the content that is being published in, in our social media uh, application or our social media site. And maybe we can use the SFW feature to check if the content within those images is actually uh, appropriate or not. Or we will also would like to use the image enhancements that are available to uh, improve the quality of our of, or images in, in, in the application. And of course, it's very useful as well for creative fields. Maybe it can help us to generate new ideas or refine our work that we are already uh, working on. So as you can see, many different applications 
and many different use cases where we can use um, this super cool technology. Okay, now let's talk about Copilot and why Copilot is so amazing and all of the different stuff that we can solve with it and all of the different applications uh, that we can use with Copilot. So what is Copilot? It's an AI-driven tool and it leverages the power of machine learning and also natural language processing to optimize you know, productivity. We can be more creative. We can collaborate better with um, you know, uh, other teams, other developers, and so on. What are the functionalities of Copilot? There are a lot of them and it has started with auto-completing code and it got really, really popular, really good at it. And now Copilot has been, uh, you know, growing in many different kinds of applications. So for example, it can generate images, it can analyze images, and it can also generate and analyze data. It can summarize meetings. You can ask questions to it. And as a large language model, we can get a reply um, and we can do much, much more things with it. We can improve the search that we do on the web and so on. Um, so Copilot has become a really powerful player in the current AI ecosystem um, and the current AI technologies that are available to us. And because of that, there's the power of partnership. So using Copilot within your tools or within the AI tools or, or the applications or the software that you're development, developing is actually very powerful and very useful. So for example, you can combine Copilot with cybersecurity to be better at detecting uh, possible threats. Uh, we can use Copilot to uh, create a chatbot that we can use for customer service. We can use it for software development, not only to autocomplete our, and help us generate code, but also to work with workflows, workflows like, for example, um, the one that we're going to be working on today to analyze images and get, you know, information related to, to those um, images. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the file stacks AI capabilities, again, related to uh, images, right? So we are going to talk about image tagging, and that is um, the, the, a, the, the machine learning model, the AI model, analyze what is uh, the content on, on that image, and it returns a bunch of tags of all of the you know content or objects that it recognizes uh, within that image. Then we have again the uh, SVFW feature, which is it analyzes the image and it flags if it has inappropriate content. Then we have the image captioning, and the image captioning basically what it does is that it describes the image that uh, the content of that image. We have the image sentiment. It analyzes again sentiments, uh, uh, the emotions and moods that are uh, identified within the image. And then we have a very, very interesting and useful feature, which is it analyzes the image to see if it's copyrighted. And if so, it returns uh, the licenses um, that are associated with that image. So what we're going to do now is that we will see um, each of these functionalities and how they work. So first we have the image tagging and what it does again is that it detect a bunch of features that might be in, uh, included in the images that we upload to Filestack. So as you can see on the right, that is an image, the image that we want to analyze. And in the, uh, sorry, in the left, 
and in the right we get the the structure that we get back from a uh, file stack that shows all of the objects or all of the features that it detects within the image and with a level of confidence uh, which can be seen for example um, with a 90 percent level of confidence it can recognize a woman in the image or maybe with a uh, 85 or 95 percent of let's say confidence it recognized that it's a festival and so on then we have the safe for work uh, capability and again it shows if the uploaded file contains any unsafe content or if it's safe for our business so in this case it analyzed the images and what we get back is that it's actually safe for 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 work so the content is pretty safe it will return a boolean value true or false then we have image sentiment and it will detect the emotions and the mood of um, that are within the uploaded images so these are the emotions that it looks for it looks for happy fear sad angry, surprised, disgusted, confused, and calm. For example, in this particular image, we can see that the emotion that has the highest value of confidence is happy with a 99.74%. And then for the rest of the emotions, it's, it's very, very low, almost like um, 0%, 0 0.09, 0 0.01 so obviously the emotion that is recognizing uh, as, as, as the correct one is happy then we have image cap captioning and it will describe the content of the uploaded image so in this case uh, the caption will be that the caption that is returned would be a close-up of a bird so one of the really cool implementation, like one of the really cool use cases for this feature will be accessibility in, let's say, our website. So maybe we want, we have a bunch of images and what we do is that we upload them to get the caption and then those captions, we can use it within our code, within our HTML code and uh, to make our site accessible you know, for screen readers and, and people with disabilities to be able to um, uh, have a better user experience while visiting our website. Okay, so now we are going to go to the demo time. Again, we um, I created a very basic application and we're going to go through it just to understand how can we first implement the uh, file picker to um, you know pick a file on our local machine and send it over to file stack and then being able to use it to um, um, to use it with all of these features about uh, AI image captioning AI uh, image copyright and so on so let's move to the demo time from the demo and um, this is an application that is very very simple but it's enough to see what are all of the features that we can use uh, the file picker connecting to the api making requests to the api and get the responses back and so on so in this app um, there is this drop down where you can select all of the all of the um, processes that you can run over the images um, and, and run the, the AI models that will provide the responses back. So let's have a look first of about like how it works and then we will have a look at the code. So let's start with the demo. Let's select an image for tagging. And as you can see, we are rendering like we are uh, showing the file picker from file stack and it's pretty cool because you have uh, 
several really nice features to, to get the images. So the first one, it allows us to select files from our machine. Uh, we can use drag and drop. We can also copy and paste the files. Um, then we have uh, a functionality to enter a URL to an image. Then we can also do a web search of images. So for example, if I select, let's say bird, I can get a bunch of images from birds and then I can play with them. And also you can uh, access Facebook, Instagram, or connect to Google Drive to uh, pick images from there. So I will select an image from my device and I will use this one for the tagging task. Uh, when the image is, is selected, I click upload and it will send the image to file stack and then it, it will make the API call. And this happened really, really fast as you could notice. Uh, and then when we get, what we, what we get back from the API is as we saw on the presentation um, an array of values that are or the tags or the objects that are being recognized in the image with the value of um, with the value of per, like the percentage of um, certainty that that object object is actually what is what is found on the image. So for example, we can see that uh, with a 97% of certainty, there is an umbrella on the image. So that is uh, quite obvious. Uh, for example, with a 95%, there's a woman, um, people, uh, like a concert, and so on. Now let's have a look at the image FFW. So basically what we want to see is that the image is actually appropriate for, for to be used on your business case. So let's select this one and let's see what it returns. So it says that is true, that it is actually safe for work and um, if you remember from the from the presentation, what we get back is a Boolean value. It can be true or false. Now let's have a look at image sentiment. So I will select this one. Um, run the process again. So as you can see, is is detecting the the AI model is detecting the um, sentiment in the image to be happy a 99.75 percent so if you have a look um, all of the sentiments are organized from like the um, the with the highest value from the highest value to the lower one so it recognizes in the image that that person is 99.75% happy and all the way down to count on 0.01%. Now let's have a look at captioning. And I will select this one. I will upload it. And the process happens and I get the caption back. So in this case, it will be a close-up of a bird, uh, which is a, a pretty cool um, caption, of course, uh, for this particular image. So again, this is very useful if you want to, you know, uh, work in the accessibility on your website, and you want to add the title, a very descriptive title uh, to all of the images that you're using, Again, if, if people with disabilities are using screen readers, uh, the better the caption, uh, it, it, the better the user experience for that particular set of users. 
So now let's talk about the steps that we need to follow in, in the file stack dashboard in order to prepare everything to continue with uh, the development of this application. If you look in, into the uh, file stack uh, dev portal, you, you will see this um, key here. So when you create a new, a new application, you will have a key and an API key, and you will use this in your code uh, to connect to the API. Of course, you would like to be sharing your API key in a webinar, but uh, I will make sure to, that I will delete this uh, right after the webinar is over, so this cannot be abused. Uh, all right, so you will have a look at um, all of the um, files that you have been uploaded, the transformations, uh, and so on. Then one part that is very, very important is going to the security um, tab. So in the security tab, uh, you will see a, a policy and signature um, values, okay? So in the policy and signature values, basically what you're going to do is that uh, you're going to add an expiration date, you're going to add a time, you will select um, all of the values, right? So you can have all of the different uh, options to make a call to the API. And then what you will have is this um, string for the, um, for the safe, for the policy and then this one for the signature and you will copy and paste those somewhere to then add it on your uh, application so these are the steps that you need to follow first of all integrate the file stack file picker of course in your application so you are able to select the files select the images send it to file stack and uh, then you're able to call the API and get the uh, response back depending on the process that you want to run over your image. Then, of course, uh, this is the second part, which is where you are running the process over your images and then enable security, which is what I just showed you about the policy and the signature. So now let's have a look at the code. Let's talk about uh, Copilot. So Copilot, like I said in the beginning of the presentation, can help us to uh, get better at coding, be more productive. Uh, it can give us suggestions on um, the next code that we can write, maybe a function, and also it can, we can chat with Copilot as well. And maybe I can ask Copilot to uh, explain a part of the code and so on. So let's have a look at it. Uh, so let's say that I want to create a new style file, um, CSS file. I'm gonna call it style2.css. And then I can ask Copilot to generate code. So for example, I can say, I want a background, background image in the body of my um, page. And what it will do is that it will generate suggested code, right? And I can discard it or I can uh, accept it. And as simple as that, we now know um, how to do, uh, how to add a background image to a body tag. And maybe you're new to CSS and you have to go, uh, you know, look for the reference, the documentation. But now um, it's as simple as this. Of course, we have to be very mindful that Copilot can uh, make mistakes. So it's always good to double check the code and obviously do your testing as you always do if you're uh, 
the great developer that I believe you are, uh, and test that everything is, is working as expected. So let's say that I want to maybe add something to a hidden tag. So as you can see now, I'm getting this um, gray text that is suggestions from Copilot, and I can accept it or not. Um, so for example, it's saying, okay, the, the head one is going to have this color, or maybe I can just uh, uh, click tab and it will accept the code. So let's have a look at something more, a little bit more um, complex. So this is part of the code that I created for the application that I'm going to show you today. It's very, very basic, but let's say that uh, you're new at coding and you really want to understand like what is going on here. So what you can do is again, you can call Copilot and maybe we can say, explain to me what is this code about? And we have to choose like what do we want copilot? So I want to explain, let's say setter file. And it explains what the code does, which is pretty amazing, right? And it's a very, very um, complete explanation. So it says that this function server file, what it does is that um, it reads a file and send it as an HTTP request and then we can see uh, all of the attributes, the parameters of, of um, the, uh, the function and so on. So this is also very, very useful and uh, how Copilot can be of uh, great help to us. Um, so yeah, I will highly recommend you to uh, install, if you're using, for example, I'm using VS Code, I will highly recommend you to install the Copilot uh, extension. And the other one that I'm using is the Copilot, GitHub Copilot um, chat as well. And the chat is the one that where you can ask like um, for recommendations. For example, one interesting one could be, how can I improve this code? And let's see what, what it said. So it's going to analyze the code and it will improve it, as you can see. And we can select if we want to include the changes that the pilot suggested or, or this part of them. Uh, so that is also pretty, pretty cool. Again, Double check, always double check that everything is working as expected. So I'm gonna discard this and I will um, go ahead and explain um, a little bit of the, the code. So again, this is a very, very, very simple application. And what we want to do is that first we have an HTML code uh, and an HTML uh, file, and uh, we have to be very sure that we are including the script to uh, to the file stack library, right? After including the script to the file stack library, we are, uh, I add the drop down, and then I make a call to the to the script that we use. Um, I'm going to go to the to the uh, JavaScript file. So basically, what we're doing here is that um, we want to have an ev um, an event listener as soon as the document is loaded, like the page is loaded. I will start the the file stack client, right? So I'm calling file stack and I'm initializing it with my API key. So if you remember, as you remember, it's the one that you have here when you create a new application. So now I have my API key here and I initialize the file stack client. And what I do next is that I um, initialize the, the picker, right? 
As soon as I have the picker, I can start playing with it. Then uh, we have uh, a line where I access my element called uh, processing type, and that element is the drop down that I have with all of the options. So I add a listener, and when this drop down changes, I'm going to call the picker, right? So um, what I do is that I call the picker, I pass some options. So the options that I pass to the picker are the processing type. It can be, again, uh, let's say the tagging or the captioning. And then I pass the handle and the URL for the image. And I open the picker, right? So then this function fetch and display, again, what it has is the processing type, the handle, and the URL, the image URL. Uh, I will add this constant with the policy. And remember, the policy is the string that we saw, um, that we saw here on the security uh, area. All right. And then what we are going to do is that um, depending on the processing type, like we have the policy uh, string, we have the signature string, we have the processing type, so it can be tax, S, F, W, image, sentiment, and so on. And then we have the handle. And the handle is a value that is uh, that we get back every time that we upload a file, an image, using the file picker. So the file picker will upload the image to file stack and we will get a handle back. And the handle is a string that is a unique identifier for those images. So, um, of course, all of this information, you can see it on the documentation for, for developers. Uh, which is very, very good and complete. So as soon as we get everything, uh, we can display the result, right? So we get the processing type again, the data rest, which is all of the, the response that we get back from the API. Let's say if we are using image tagging, we will have that JSON object with all of the tags and on the value for certainty um, for those stacks. And then the image URL because we want to display it. And if there is any error uh, retrieving the API response, we will print it in the console uh, with the description of the error. Uh, and then this function, what it does is that basically we are building uh, the HTML to um, show in the application the image and the tags that we are getting back from the API. So depending on the uh, process that we're following, uh, image tagging and so on, uh, there's a different way of um, building up that HTML uh, to show, for example, if we are using the image sentiment, uh, we iterate, um, we iterate over all of the tags that we get back, and uh, the percentage that that we are getting from the each emotion, we we convert it to percent percentage format, and then we are just adding all the different tags. And that is it. That that's basically what we are doing. As I said, it's a simple code. Uh, it's mostly all around setting up the policy, setting up the uh, the signature value, making the call to the API, and most importantly, of course, is uh, just following this to um, instantiate uh, um, the file stack client, the picker, and being able to select our images, send them over to the file stack, and we can get it back 
the handle for that image, which again is a unique identifier, and then uh, the image URL, because now it's posted, like it's uploaded into a file stack. And then we can go ahead and make the call to the API. Um, we have some styling, um, basic CSS that I use to create the very, very simple uh, application again. And yeah, that's it. So I will be sharing again the um, the code in, in our repo. And now uh, we are going to move ahead. And just to wrap up, um, we can see now that uh, the integration into our applications is a seamless integration. And we can actually use this AI um, image technology in our applications in a very, very easy way. Uh, we can do enhanced image processing and, and that can also bring the, like innovation and creativity into our solutions. And we can create innovative collaboration. We can have innovative collaboration because of all of these new um, features that we can include into our, our applications and we can provide maybe to our clients or to another teams. And of course, again, uh, this can bring uh, success to our business and also it can bring creative success because we can, uh, you know, innovate in so many different ways with uh, the, the, the inclusion and the support of AI technologies into our projects. And of course, this will empower our users because users now we will be able to uh, you know, have more flexibility into what they can do within their applications. Uh, you know, like I said before, maybe you have a social media, uh, you know, application and you really want to avoid uh, your users getting into trouble because they're uploading copyrighted material, copyrighted images, and so on. And yeah, we're just looking forward at what can you do with these uh, really nice features that Filestack is providing to us and with the help of Copilot and all of these is really nice AI innovation. Uh, we can really wait to see uh, what people is going to be building with this. And that will be all. Thank you so much for joining me. So now we have time for uh, questions and again, if you have any any comments, if you want to ask, uh, you know, uh, additional questions after the webinar, just scan that QR code and you can get in touch with me. And yeah, I will be more than happy to help you out. So yeah, let's move on to the Q and A. So yeah, uh, thank you, Patty. Um, so I will be asking the Q&A now. Uh, I have gathered some questions here from the uh, from the uh, audience. So the first question is, um, what are the technical challenges of accurately uh, interpreting emotion from images using AI? Yeah, well, uh, always using AI, um, it's always going to be tricky mostly to, to be able to catch, you know, subtle, like emotional cues uh, in, in, you know, maybe facial expressions or, or the body language. And it's also about understanding the concept. And I mean, uh, computers and AI, uh, it, it, they can be much smarter than humans in many, many different domains, mm. but we still have uh, you know, certain domains where the, uh, we are better at catching this kind of, uh, you know, subtle uh, uh, expressions. And it's also related, you know, to, to your background, maybe the culture. Uh, so, yeah, um, that, I, I think the technical challenges right now are related to, to that. 
superpower that human uh, that we have. Mm, yeah, I, I agree. So another question someone is someone is wondering, like, like how does AI actually see an image differently than than we do? Okay, so so the thing is that uh, an image uh, is really represented in the computer as as a bunch of binary numbers, right? And and values that represent together might represent a shade of a of a, uh, a particular color. So when the when the image when the AI the machine learning model is analyzing an image, it's just analyzing uh, a pattern of of numbers. And that's the way it sees. Oh, okay. That's actually uh, informative. So, uh, based on that, are there like uh, any potential biases in how sentiment analysis AI is trained? So, if so, how might those be addressed? Yeah, the, the thing about the bias is is also related, uh, first of all, with the, with the training data on the models. So um, if, if the training data is, is not diverse enough, um, then you can start having, having a lack of you know, representation and that can bring uh, uh, bias. And then also, for example, if you have humans uh, tagging the images for, for annotating the images for training, uh, they can also bring uh, some of their own biases into the data so that can, uh, affect the, the results and, and, and the bias that the system might have. Mm, okay, so um, another question uh, is how accessible are AI-powered tools for non-programmers? So can tools like Copilot or Gemini or ChatGPT, can, can, they, can it bridge the gap? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's not only like right now, for example, uh, let's say, um, the models that Google has. Uh, they have models that are fine tuned or are trained specifically for coding. So that can obviously help, uh, you know, new developers or, or non programmers. But it's not only uh, on that side. For example, Google has a tool that is called the Teachable Machine, and you mm. can go and Google it, and it's free. And basically, it's a very, very easy tool that allows you to create a machine learning model in a minute and train it on your machine. It's, it's super, super easy to use. And cool. you can That's have cool. non programmers Yeah, it's, it's really nice to recognize images or maybe, uh, you know, audio. Um, so it's, it's a tool that you don't really have to be a programmer or a machine learning engineer or a data scientist in order to use them. We'll make sure to check that out and maybe it will be a, a different uh, webinar for the future. Um, so, it's really fun. It's really fun. It's yeah, it really, sounds really fun. Cool. Yeah. So uh, based on that, so uh, well, I guess it kind of can be answered. Like, what are some new exciting developments, maybe for you on the horizon for uh, maybe AI-powered image enhancement or AI in general? I mean, uh, like someone said in the chat, is it's just that in AI everything is advancing so so fast that uh, the the innovation is just mind blowing, and then you get tools like Sora or, you know, um, the image generation or, or um, you know, video generation is just mind blowing. And I can just wait to see how this innovation can be used, for example, for, for um, you know, automate a bunch of tasks, maybe help on the healthcare industry. So yeah, it's, it's, that's the coolest part, I think. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the final questions would be like, um, are there downsides maybe to consider when using a tool like Copilot, or does that make it to rely, does that does that make us to uh, reliant on AI? Yeah, I mean, one of the downsides is that uh, we really need to understand that um, uh, AI is just a tool, and that sometimes it can be wrong, so we still need to keep in the loop. Uh, and check that what we're getting is actually uh, a correct response and not to blindly believe in AI. Uh, it, it's a tool that can go, can be wrong sometimes. Yeah, um, I completely agree.
And that's all the questions that we have. Uh, Patty, do you have any final words from for everyone before I uh, wrap us up? Yeah, thank you. Thank you first to Filestack for, for having me. I always enjoy very much uh, playing with your tech because it's amazing. And yeah, thank you everyone for joining the webinar and, and reach out to me if you have any question or, or if you play around with the tool. And yeah, hope you have all uh, a great weekend. Yeah, uh, so that's a wrap. Uh, I hope you got a taste of the, the incredible ways AI is transforming image enhancement, uh, especially in 2024. So tools like Falstax uh, uh, is, are taking the hassle out of creating amazing visuals. And when you add the power of Copilot, uh, the possibilities get even, uh, get even wilder. Uh, we're also actually updating our application, uh, our AI, our APIs to the latest uh, uh, new AI features. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out on that. But yeah, remember this is just the beginning. And as Patty mentioned, AI is always evolving. So keep exploring, uh, get the creative juices flowing and don't be afraid to experiment. Um, and if you have any lingering questions or if you just want to geek out about AI and images, so feel free to drop by our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at Falstack official. And obviously the code from Patty, uh, the one in VS Code will be available via GitHub. We'll also send it there uh, with the webinar replay so, if, so you can try it yourself. Um, and yeah, the this one will be uh, uploaded to YouTube as well, so you can uh, watch it at your own leisure. And thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next one. Thank you everyone.